Hey, Janice. Hi, Anthony. Today we're going to talk about bad news is bad for your health. All right, so this is a, <laughs> here's my sales pitch. This is a free and easy solution to improve your sleep, your happiness, and your overall health. So I'm not exaggerating. That's how much avoiding bad news actually improves your life. Oh, I agree with you, and I'm really looking forward to this topic. Um, so th today we're going to talk about why it's bad for you, uh, the worst types of bad news, what you can do generally, and how to consume the news media, and then how to deal with social media. And then make sure you stay till the end, because lastly, I will share the most ruthless step to stop bad news coming into your life. And don't forget to sign up at anthonyspark.com slash join to be in the know for any future books that might be coming out. Maybe land a free copy. Important to get on that. Very good. Let's get started. Okay, first, we'll talk about why bad news is bad for you. And this is going to be the sort of so the science part, even though I am by no means a scientist. All right. So your first reaction when you hear or consume bad news is you will feel scared or sad, you know, depending on what the news is. But then what happens is the, is the important part. You begin to internalize that bad news. You either consciously or subconsciously start to think, could this happen to me? And it's a natural. This is very natural. It's a survival instinct because you're trying to find, you're, you're gathering, inf we are constantly gathering information that will either help us procreate or, or help us live and survive, avoid danger, right? So it's natural for us to, to seek out that type of information. In fact, studies have shown that we humans will actively choose bad news over good news because bad news is more likely to contain survival-based information. So what's the problem with this? Bad news can leave you feeling anxious, depressed, and from a physiological point of view, your heart actually beats faster and your blood pressure actually goes up. So over the years, consuming a steady stream of all of this bad news will take a pretty hefty toll on your health and your body. Yeah. Yeah. And I absolutely agree with you about that. Uh, so what are the worst types of bad news? First and foremost, relatable news. For example, you have kids and the, the something happens and, and it's a Right. I know it, it could be anything it, and it's in the news and it's sad, but you're going to take that on a little heavier than you would if it wasn't relatable. Um, not just kids, but let's say you're an airline pilot or you work on an airline and there's a catastrophe. Again, you're going to take that on. But when it's relatable and you understand it and it's kind of your life, you're going to take that on. You're going to feel stressed or even local news at your town and something happens and you just cut, like you said, you get stressed, you feel, you feel anxious. Um, I think uh, if I could jump in, I think the relatable yeah. re relatability has a lot to do with the likelihood that it could impact you, right? Absolutely. So oh, if, absolutely. It's, if it's like a child who's similar in age or gender to your child, like that's going to be even more of an impact than a child in general. Or if something absolutely. happens at the the store, the Walmart or the Whole Foods or whatever that you often go to, you're going to feel that because, holy, I was just there today, you know? <laughs> right. Like I was yeah, there. Yeah. Um, you know, and personally, I'm a, I'm a police officer's wife. Mm. Can you imagine? I, I mean, I take all that on when I see the news media, especially in the world we live in right now. Oh, boy. Um, I know. It's, uh, it's, it's, it, again, stress. I get this topic. Um, but the another worst type of uh, bad news is visual compared to just reading about it. So you're seeing it. You 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 know anymore. You can see anything online. All the bad stuff. I mean, there's really no filters. You can find it. But when you see it compared to reading it, tell me, does that not kind of get you going a little bit and, and stress you out? And yeah, there's supposedly a neurological reason for that. Meaning our bodies, our our human minds, still don't quite distinguish between what we see and what we actually experience. So when you watch a video of something horrific happening to a child or a war or a robbery, you actually feel like you were there. And if you've ever been in a, you know, in a fight or a, a car accident, you know what, like what ha the, the way your body you're actually, actually being there, you, it may be a watered down version, but you are feel, experiencing it when you see it on video. So just, or, or, or even images. So keep that in mind. No, absolutely. You, you do take that on. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what do you do? What do you do about this? How do you, do you respond do? with this information? Uh, number one, just turn off the TV or the phone or the computer. Uh, oh, excuse me. Don't just turn off the TV or the phone after you consume the bad news. That's the worst thing you can do. You're leaving your body with these unresolved um, experiences. 
So here's how you help your body resolve. Number one, look up a positive outcome to the story so that there's actually it's kind of a, almost like a happy ending, right? So if okay. there was a family that experienced a tragedy, try to find maybe their GoFundMe page where they got the love and support of the community. It doesn't undo the tragedy that happened to them, but at least there's hopefully um, a better, more holistic and positive outcome to that mental narrative in your mind, right? Okay. All right. Or, or maybe some way that the family was able to move on or honor their, tra- or their family, something like that. Secondly, if it's something that's more um, like a shark attack or an earthquake or something like that, and you're just left shaking with, oh my gosh, this could happen to me, that leaves you in a state of an unresolved state. One way you can resolve that is to reduce your anxiety by looking up or learning what should you do if you encounter that situation. Because think about it. You've been scared about the potential for a shark attack. And then you just go to bed thinking, holy cow, I could get bitten by a shark one day. But if you look up, okay, if I'm in that situation, here's A, B, and C, what I'll do. Then at least you'll go to bed saying, okay, I learned that that shark attack could happen, but I also learned what to do if it does happen. That's more of a closure and a more holistic approach to consuming. Now it's useful news, not just scary news. Right, right. And how about the statistics of shark attacks? So you you go to bed thinking, oh my goodness, yeah. I'm going to get bit by a shark. But seriously, if you look up what are the actual statistics of the probability of getting bit by a shark, that may be a little bit help you. That, that, that may help some resolution. I agree with you logically, Janice, but since most of us are not logical and we don't understand that those odds are minuscule, I think the other right. one does work a little better just to, right. for whatever reason. <laughs> right, right. Just, yeah, right. Absolutely. So how to consume the news? You could simply cut it off and not watch the news, which, okay, quick short story. I had to do that. So we had the news on every night when we were watching, you know, eating dinner, we had the news on. And I'm eating I, too. I, well, right. But I, I found it that I was starting to get stressed because, you know, the news is negative. Every single thing locally is negative. There's hardly anything positive. And I noticed that the kids, you could see it and then they were just kind of getting sad like because they would start to empathize with what was on the news. And I realized, is this really, it's not really what I want to bring in. So I, I cut the cord. We, I haven't watched the news on the TV maybe a year, but... But, but we had to do that for the family because we were all feeling stressed. Again, police officer in our family. So we take all that on and then they start thinking, well, dad. And, you know, so we cut the cord. So you well, can. Quick, quick question about your personal yeah. experience. Have Go you on. feel like you've missed anything? No, not at all. <laughs> Be- not at all. Nor, I, I don't think, nor do I care is a good word because we'll get into this. There's social media. There's other ways yep. to get your news on your terms. Yep. Very good. So that's, I chose to watch the news the way I want to watch it and pick and choose, just like we're talking about the topics that I can handle. Um, so for bad news, it's going to come up. Do you maybe not click on the images, but read the story? That's one way to minimize your impact from whatever is going on. Um, and again, minimizing your exposure. It's, if you know that a story is coming up and you're watching the news and it's a tragic, coming up tragic story about a child, you know, you know that it's coming up at five o'clock. Maybe that's a good time. To turn the TV off just for like 15 minutes. Wait, hold out on the story and then come back because you want to listen to the weather. You know, you know, it's coming. That might be a good way to kind of get around it um, or read more periodicals or, or books because they're going to be the end story. So instead of getting the news like happening now, we have no idea what's going on. We're going to speculate for the next 15 minutes and you're all going to die. Wait until the story has, you know, it's ending and they have all the information in a periodical or a book. Just something, again, trying to help you minimize the effects that it has in whole. Totally agree. Uh, books tend to, uh, the news cycle tends to be the roller coaster with a lot of misinformation. And the books tend to be the, the more well researched, the more evergreen version of events, right? And history is more historical. I don't know how to put it, but yeah. yeah. Not hot yeah. takes and reactions. Yeah. Right, right. It's that happening now. It's that news alert that, right, right. They take it down a notch and give you the store a little calmer, right? Cool. So, okay, how about social media? We, you mentioned that earlier. So let's talk about how to consume your news or deal with your news or potentially bad news in social media. So number one, my number one tip is never, ever, 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 never, ever, click ever? on, ever? <laughs> never click on bad news on social media, ever. There's a reason for that. If you don't already know, social media, their whole algorithm or system is based mm-hmm. on force feeding you what you already want or what they think you already want, right? So if you click on one piece of bad news, 
they are going to feed you a steady diet of bad news until you want to vomit, right? <laughs> Essentially. Yes, you're hooked. You cannot yeah. get out of that cycle. Nope. It is a downward cycle because once you've clicked on one, they will keep sen- sending you as sensational or as clickbaity uh, bad news. And you're human and they are very... Um, very clever. I mean, they, they write headlines and titles to make you want to click. So once you click a second one, you're done. That's it. Right. You are down that downward spiral. Right. And if you don't believe that that spiral happens, try clicking on something like you like a pair of pants. What's the next 55 things that come up on your Facebook feed is pants on sale now. Like, seriously, that's it's yep. the algorithm. And it, exactly. It's not just the news articles, but it's also the ads. So if you click on a fear-based ad, uh, news article, let's say, let's use the shark example, right. you're, you're going to see a bunch of ads for, I don't know, shark yeah. repellent or something like that. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. I mean, that, that is the way it works. And a lot of ad copy is written to be fear-based. So you'll get a whole big heap and spool, spoonful of that too now. <laughs> yes, on top of everything else, right. So, yep, basically social media is pretty evil, so try to avoid it. Try to avoid it. You know, and I also do not follow some of the news outlets in the media because, again, you get their stories. And what's worse than the stories are the comments, right? Oh, and you get cool. – have, have you ever gotten sucked into the comments on anything? I mean, you, you, i guilty. And, and that's sometimes more violent and, and hateful and everything else than the bad news itself that was delivered. So, again – Read our YouTube channel comments for a good laugh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But – Again, you know what? It's just a little bit to stay out of. Don't follow it. And then you can click on it. Like I look on, I have an app for my local news media. Here's an example. I look through the to- the topics, the headlines. If I want to read it, I click on it and I read it. If it's not something that I know that would benefit me or make me feel stressed, I don't read it. But it's on my terms, not whatever they want to give me. Um, okay. So, Anthony, what is the most ruthless step to stop the bad news? All right. I know this is going to be tough and a lot of people are are going to think, oh, you can't possibly do this, but I have personally and I do recommend it. Cut out of your life, your family and friends who are downers, period. Not permanently, necessarily, but you can you can you can ebb or, or, or wean yourself off those relationships and be upfront about it. Look, I don't call you as much or we don't text as much because every time I do, you're complaining about something. Or you, I mean, look, maybe, well, if somebody says, well, my life sucks, you know, it's not my fault. Maybe it's your attitude that sucks. Maybe your life is pretty awesome. You live in America, you're healthy, you know, you have a job, but you just complain about everything. So, um, yeah, well, we're going to be, we're going to be corresponding a little less. Um, I mean, that sounds really brutal. It's true. But I think it's more brutal to just absorb that bad news constantly out of a sense of friendship. I mean, what kind of friendship is that? Right. Uh, I'm, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. I feel like a lot of us, if not all of us, have that friend or even a circle of that friends whose maybe uh, energy is to complain to each other. I don't know. Right? Well, don't you ever have that friend that when the phone rings and you look at it and you see the caller, uh, you know that it's going to be a negative conversation, right? I mean, you have, I know I have them, you have them, and you look and you're like, oh, can I handle this right now? That maybe isn't a very positive relationship. And it's not just about them complaining about their personal lives. If somebody is a, a news addict no. and they love talking about the headlines that you are actively trying to avoid, same, same rationale. Like, that, dude, we don't talk any, about anything except what you read on uh, you know, CNN or Fox or whatever. So right. um, those conversations aren't fun for me. <laughs> right, right. Do you know how many people um, on Facebook or social media that I hide during any political election time? Oh, you hide. Election time? <laughs> oh, I do. Just so they don't know because I don't want them to get upset. Yeah. Sorry. But I have to hide them because I just can't handle the... The, the sh- what, shoving it down your throat of here, here's all the, and, and whether you agree or disagree, sometimes it's too much, you know? And um, I, I'm all for family first and I, I, I value my family really, really highly, but you can, you can, you can minimize family relationships. Thankfully, this hasn't happened to me personally, but um, I, I, have, have, I have, have had friends and other family members sort of just kind of turn down the volume on certain family relationships on the same, same basis. And I think that that's fair. If you know, you have to sometimes look at yourself and see, think what brings you that stress, and if you have to dial it down a little bit. Yeah, you just do. think of it this way: if your family member was literally doing something like pressing a button to 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 damage your health each time you spoke, you would tell them to stop pressing that button, or you would start hanging out with them, right? Same right. logic. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So I think that's it for today. That was a pretty interesting topic. Um, I, you know. I'd like to know how people deal with it. Maybe give us some information. Um, and then importantly, 
get on our get on our list at anthonyspark.com slash join and be in the know for future books coming up. Cool. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Janice. Talk to you next time. Bye. Talk soon.